nice under here. Oh, it's so safe. That's kind of nice out of the light too. I just don't feel like anyone can find me. It's so relaxing. Oh, <laughs> hi, sorry. I didn't see you there. Hey friends, uh, welcome back. Uh, glad to be with you. Um, so what we're up to today is we're back with some critters looking at adaptations. Um, and we're going to find out about some behaviors of some organisms in a little bit. And while I was sleeping under there, I was thinking, I wonder if there's any organisms that prefer to be covered up or under some type of shelter. Um, so in a little a few minutes, we're going to get to an investigation that's going to relate to that. So I just want to to bring that up with you. Um, so the reason we're doing this, the reason that we're taking a look at these different organisms is we are going to be doing um, an engineering unit where we're gonna design something and, and possibly build it um, that is called a hand pollinator. And probably with Ms. Walsh, you've talked a little bit about plant structures and maybe some things with pollination where we're gonna find out how insects and engineering can come together and we can learn from insects to engineer something that would pollinate some plants, okay? But let's find out a few more things about some insects first, okay? So we're gonna do that. Um, you know, we know some of the basics that they have, all insects have six legs, they have three body parts, a head, thorax, abdomen, okay? Um, and we're gonna just check check in on some of the insects from before, and then uh, after that, what we're going to do is we'll we'll do this investigation. All right, sound good? All right, friends. Well, I have to show you. I I checked in on the insects uh, this morning, and I thought, you know what? We gotta we gotta take another look at them. Okay, you can see I'm hanging out with a couple right here. This right here is the horned worm. It's interesting. He's a little bit lighter in color, very lively. And then I also have another critter that I did not show you uh, last time, okay, that I want to want to share with you. And we're going to look also for some changes, okay? All right, well, let's, let's take a look at them closer. So what I have out right now is the hornworm, like I just mentioned. So I'm going to bring you in a little closer, okay? And then we're going to just switch around here. Okay, yeah, the hornworm. Okay, and let's see if I can pick them up and still use the camera. Look at that. Okay, yeah, he's a lively one. Okay, now it looks like he has more than six legs, but there's kind of some climbing parts there. And let's see if we can see that horn. Yeah, there's that little horn that we're talking about that gives it the name the horn worm. Horn worm. Okay, so I just thought I'd check in on the, the horn worm again. Okay, and uh, we'll leave it there. Okay, I do have a habitat for it, by the way. And right now it's just on an aquarium upside down. That's why what I'm showing you on. Now check this out. This looks like a mealworm. I know it looks like a mealworm, but it's actually called a superworm. And some of you might be familiar with it. And it is the has the same body parts as a mealworm. They're much more lively and bigger. Okay. And they have this exoskeleton, which is another thing insects have. They're invertebrates. They don't have bones. Okay, so they don't have bones at all. They're invertebrates. Um, and so insects can't get super huge. Otherwise, they just, they'd implode. Okay, wow, check that hornworm out. He's flipping around. Okay, we'll get him back in his habitat pretty soon. Anyway, superworm. Yeah, it's a variation of a mealworm. Okay, and you can see it's pretty lively too. Maybe they like being on this glass or maybe they don't like it. I don't know. Um, I'll have to ask them later, see if I get an answer. All right. Um, so I wanted to check in on those two and I didn't have a super worm last time. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, they're kind of hard to find. You find them at pet shops because people use them as food in part of the food chain. Um, they use them as food uh, for typically for lizards. People are bearded dragons. Uh, people will have those as pets, and they will often give them to their critters, okay? Also, same is true for the hornworm. 
Uh, I get them at a pet shops because um, they often have them there for, for uh, food for other organisms. Okay, so other organisms would get their energy from them. Um, but I want to just get them for us to check out. So I'm not going to be feeding them to anything. But I wanted us to just check it out. Okay, well, hey, let me show you these mealworms again. We'll check in on those. And I might have to put the superworm back in its habitat. We'll see how far it crawls. If it gets too far and away on me, uh, someone I live with won't be too happy. So uh, that's why uh, we'll be careful. Okay, let's check out these mealworms. All right. Whoa, how cool. All right, well, let's look. Oh, wow. Look at this. Amazing. All right, so here's, I'm going to take out kind of the regular mealworm from before. If you want to compare uh, just size wise how big it is to the superworm. Oh, that's kind of awesome. Okay, yeah, it's quite a bit bigger. Okay, I'm going to move, move them over here just so they aren't close by each other so they don't get irritated by each other. Look at some changes that are going on. Okay. So I've got this one that was a mealworm and some of them have changed, okay? Now, some of you might remember this from last year, but this is the mealworm stage is the larva stage. And then from there, they go to something called the pupa. And here's the pupa. Isn't that cool? How it makes that change? That's awesome, okay? So we have our larva and then our pupa. Then, hold on, wait, there's more, okay? Let's see what else we have here. Oh, another pupa. Look at this one, though. It's kind of bigger, more mature. Let's put it here. Okay, there's another pupa. So before this, by the way, they're eggs, and I don't have any eggs because the eggs are so tiny. I don't have any eggs to show you. But egg, and then it goes larva, and then pupa, okay? Then an adult. And sure enough, I have a couple adults here. Now the adults don't look anything, anything like the mealworm. Here's an adult and it's a beetle. Okay. See this beetle go? Yeah, darling beetle. Look at it go. So this was a mealworm at one time. Okay. And see, this is the mealworm. I think of it as being a, like a kid. And then it goes to a pupa, which is like a teenager, okay? And then an adult is the beetle, okay? All right, be nice to your mealworm. Okay, then I've got this other beetle, and this one must have just changed because look how light it is in color. This is so cool. I've never seen one. Oh, I've got him on his back. I've never, we can look at him while he's on his back. We can see. I've never seen one this light wonder if they get darker a little bit later. But isn't that awesome how we can see these changes? Do I get a little more focused? Okay, yeah. So we can check out all these changes. Uh, let's keep the super, super worm away. So cool. Neat. So we have larva, pupa. These two are pupas. And then the adults. And this one I just need to turn over. Looks like. It's struggling, so I'm going to put them back in our container. Wow, so cool. All right, let me get these back in our container. But we can see how there's been change. Now, a couple did die, okay? And that is part of life, too. A couple mealworms didn't move on to the pupa stage, okay? So we'll leave them there. Um, but here they are. I put them back in their, their bedding. All right, look at that adult still crawling around there. Okay, I'm going to move these to the side also. And then I'm going to put my super worm back too. All right, so I um, wanted you to check in on those. And the one thing I haven't showed you yet is the good old wax worm. And the wax worm is what we're going to do our investigation on. Okay, we're going to do our investigation on wax worms. So the wax worms, let me get a, my container out of wax worms. I have some out right now, and I'll show you where they are. Um, but they're in this container. This is their bedding, and then I put food in here once in a while. And they don't need, like, um, 
a cup of water, they actually get their H2O. Oops, did I say the W word? They get their H2O from like uh, vegetables and fruit. Okay, so that's what these are. All righty. Now, so remember how I had my head underneath that that lab coat and I was kind of saying, oh, it's nice under here, I'm hiding. Well, I was wondering if wax worms, if they like to be undercover or if they like being out in the open more. And so I asked one, I said, hey, wax worm, do you prefer to be in the shade or the light? Do you hear them? No, I hear nothing but crickets. I mean, wax worms. They're saying nothing. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is do an investigation because that's how we need to find out. And I actually started it already. All right. We'll leave these hanging out here and we'll leave our hornworm hanging out there. Okay. So get your notebooks ready. All right. Notebook and pencil. If you need to pause to get your notebook or you can use a piece of paper, but if you need to pause the, um, the video, you can do that and go and get them. Sorry, my finger got in the way there. Alrighty, I'm gonna bring you over to my science notebook right now. Okay, so we'll go over and we'll check that out. All right, so remember this is about wax worms. And so at the top, what I'd like you to do, and if, again, if you need to pause to write this, cause I know it's a lot of writing, but the purpose for having a science notebook is for us to keep all of our ideas together. So the date, and then our scientific question is, do wax rooms prefer shade or light? So you're going to write that in your notebook or a piece of paper, okay? What do you think they're going to prefer? What do you think they'll prefer, shade or light? And so here's our question. So write that down. Do wax worms prefer shade or light? Okay. So, yep, and again, pause this if I'm going too fast, and then you can write it down. And then for your prediction, you can just put S or L for shade or light, which one you think they'll prefer. Because I don't want you to get hung up in just the writing. I want you to be able to do the science part of it and not spend the whole time writing. Okay, so this is what I did. Uh, we're gonna. I took 10 wax worms, and I put them on a a big tray and I put a shaded area on the tray and a lit up, I, I mean, a, a part that wasn't shaded on the tray. And so the tray looked kind of like this. You don't need to draw this, but the tray looked like this. Then I took this paper plate and I cut it in half. Here's the paper plate. So underneath it, they could get underneath here. They could get shaded. Now, where do you think I should put the 10 to start? Uh, should I put them in the shade, the light, or should I get them close to both so they can make a choice? I agree, close to both. So I took 10 of them and I put them right close so that they could make a choice. Okay, so say that's 10 that I have there. They weren't that close together because I had a bigger tray. Okay, we're going to go and I put them there quite a while ago. We're going to go and count how many are in the shade, how many are in the light. All right, here's my tray right here. Okay. And let's look under here. I'm looking around the tray in the open. Uh, there's one out, out of the tray. Okay. Then I look here, here. And if I look under the tray, I can see a couple down there. All right. So there are a couple down there that I can see underneath the plate. I'm sorry. And then we have this one out here. So if I had 10 and I only see one out, is that one coming out? Maybe it just here's my talking. Um, let's see how many would be in the shade. Okay, so here we go. Let's start. I'm going to take this off. All right, how many were in the shade? Is it nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whew, we didn't lose any. Again, I'd be in big trouble. So we had nine. These were all in the shade. And we had our one over here that stayed in the light. Interesting. Okay. So now I'll go to your chart. If you want to just put an S or an L here too, you can do that for our chart. But we had nine that were in the shade. So put nine there and one that stayed out in the light. Okay. Um, all right. Now let's go down here. And 
A claim, that's what we found out. So based on our data, so claims are always based on science and our data, what we found out. Okay, so just based on what I did, most waxworms prefer, and then I want you to write what we found out, shade or light. Okay, you're going to write that there. Okay, then you're going to take a picture of this and you're going to upload it on Seesaw. Okay, or just put it on Seesaw. All right, when this is all done, you're going to take a picture of it, put it on Seesaw. Okay, and then you have your science notes that you keep. Okay, because we're going to do more science, of course. All right. Well, now I know if I make a habitat for a wax worm, should it be shaded or light? Mm hmm I agree. Okay. So, friends, I look forward to seeing your submissions. Okay. And uh, we will see you later. What did you say, wax worms? Yes, we'll see you later, second graders. I think that's what they're all yelling right now. <laughs> yeah, did you hear that? <laughs> All right, friends, have a great rest of your day.